this is David. Today we're going to talk about Azure Web Apps. Azure Web Apps are one of the app services that are provided by Azure. They, uh, they host things like Logic Apps or a Web API for doing some web creating web services or a website with HTML and JavaScript and backend code that we're familiar with. Well, a bunch of things are hosted inside of an app service. Now we're going to focus in this video on web apps, which is essentially our web sites. We do this by clicking this big green plus create resource button. We'll go down to web and select web app here. We'll give it a name. It has to be unique among all web apps because it's going to be a UR, publicly facing URL that'll be whatever I type in here, HTTP colon, whatever I type in here, dot Azure websites dot net. So it has to be unique. So I'm going to call this one DG test web that is available. The green check bar button says I, it is. Uh, I'll put it in a resource group. I'll call my new resource group DG Test Web RG, and I can select whether it's going to run on Windows or Linux or in a Docker container. And then I, I select an app service plan. And right here, I want to create a new app service plan. I'm going to call it DG Test Web ASP. And this determines the location where this web app will be hosted. I probably want that near my users or maybe near any backend resources they happen to be interacting with. Uh, and uh, maybe near me as well as I'm uh, as I'm building. I happen to be in Chicago, so this makes sense here to put it in the central U.S. But you want to think about those factors. And then the pricing tier this determines what uh, uh, how big of a machine you want to run on. So you can pay more and get machines with lots of processors, lots of memory, faster processors, solid state drives, things like that. Uh, or you can just take the standard one, which we let up through here. Um, and that's it. Click create. It'll go out and it'll create this resource group and it'll create this web app on top of that. It doesn't take very long, but it takes enough time that I'm going to pause right here until this is done. We are back. It only took about a minute to create that. And up here, I see that I can go to my resource. I could also search for it over in the left menu. But there's my web app right here. And it's all created. And if I want to, I can change things in here. I could, for example, come down to the quick start and there are links here for creating content and deploying it. Notice the things that are supported here. ASP.NET. Not surprising, this is a Microsoft platform. That's a Microsoft tool set. It's Microsoft Azure. Uh, but also PHP, Python, Java, Node. All of these are supported in web apps. So whatever language you're using of these, you can certainly uh, add them to, uh, it shouldn't restrict you from using Azure to deploy your web applications to. We have deployment credentials, so if I wanted to FTP my code up to here, then I'll set some credentials in here. The username will be FTP slash whatever username I type in here. In this case, it's DGR is what it's defaulting to. Uh, and then I'll put a password in here. Deployment slots allow me to create a staging slot. So if I want to test out my code, make sure it all works online in the cloud in Azure, and then swap deployment for production, I can do so. I can even have multiple deployment slots if I want to have different stages of testing. Um, there are deployment options if you want to set up continuous integration into continuous deployment. You see here that you can deploy from Visual Studio Team Services, OneDrive, local Git repository, GitHub, all sorts of things are available here for deployment. And here's some of the settings we can set in here. If we want to put set our default page, for example, that's down here. Which languages are supported and what version of those languages are supported are here. So if I wanted to support Python, I could turn it on and tell it whether I want 2x or 3x Python. That's all available in here. We want to set some authentication or authorization. We can turn that on right here. All these things are available to you. And what's really nice is they're available throughout all of the app services, the mobile apps, the logic apps, and the web services, and so on. These are th This makes it nice because if a feature is added to any one of those app services, it's added to all of them. And it also lets you host them all together, which makes passing uh, c calling one from the other a lot easier because you can pass identities a lot more easy if they're all hosted on the same platform. So if I want to see this in action, go up to the Overview tab, and it did create a sample page for me. This is the URL, DG Test Web, that's the name of the <clears throat> that I assigned to it, dot azurewebsites.net. And if I click that, this is actually a hyperlink right here. It'll open up this page. 
So right here, uh, what I want to do is replace this, of course, with my own custom code, which I can do either through FTPing some code up to here, or I can do it through setting up some continuous integration and pushing it out from my source control. In this video, I've shown you how to create an Azure web app using Microsoft Azure. This is David. Thank you for watching.